Chris, Mike Gundy, the Oklahoma State head coach, decided to get the wheels turning again. And everybody knows how much we enjoy this. Realignment might be coming sooner than anybody expected for the Big 12 again. Now, they've already taken BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF from the AAC, but Mike Gundy said that he believes that the Big 12 is not done expanding. He said, in a conversation with Barry Trammell from the Oklahoman, he said, we could be at 14 very easily five years from now from what I'm hearing. He said, I think that there is strength in numbers. When you watch this thing, the Big 12 has always had some issues because people would say there's only 10 members. He said, I think there's strength in numbers. Now, I'm speaking out of turn here because Bowlesby didn't tell me this. When I just read between the lines and listen to what people say, including him, even though he's not speaking directly to the subject, there is strength in numbers. When you have numbers, it allows you to be a little more diversified in what you do. So I would not be surprised if we were at 14 in five years. Now, we talked last week on the show about the different options, the different G5 powerhouses that could emerge now that BYU, Cincy, etc., are gone from the G5. If they are looking to bring in two more to move up to 14, who are your top two targets? I mean, I'd really want Memphis, but that's a selfish thing. I don't know that the Big 12 wants Memphis. Um, but Memphis makes a lot of sense now that the, the landscape has shifted, a lot right? Of sense. So, yeah, uh, Memphis, I, I'll I tell you this. Memphis's biggest issue right now is their facilities, but they are working on that. Now, I don't know what they're going to do about the football facility, right? The Liberty Bowl is, is it, we're from Memphis. We love the Liberty Bowl. But the Liberty Bowl is incredibly outdated. It is oversized for what Memphis don't, does, don't etc. Don't speak for me. I don't love the Liberty <laughs> Bowl. Okay, it's a shithole, Gary. It is. It's a it bomb is. shelter. It's just a giant form of concrete. It is. It really is. Got great sight lines. It's great for the bowl game, I guess. But you know, at, an on-campus stadium would be significantly better. Uh, the basketball stuff is good. Like, obviously, a brand-new basketball facility. So, that's I think that's Memphis's biggest hang-up. Uh, they are a Carnegie R1 university now, so that helps as far as academics go. But uh, but outside of Memphis, let's let's stay off of Memphis. We've got a couple other, uh, excuse me, a couple other options. Uh, Boise State was in the running the last go-round. Yeah. But at, as far as location goes, I mean, they are nowhere near. Memphis would at least be a bridge to Cincinnati and UCF. I, I don't know what Boise brings as far as location goes. Uh, athletically, yes, it fits perfectly. But but that's uh, that's my biggest well, thing. I mean, up but there. hang on, does that give you what you want? So I mean, like they're in West Virginia. I mean, Jesus, how far away is that from some? I agreed, but I I, I wonder okay. people that are in the Big Twelve. I wonder if they would have done that West Virginia deal over again. Well, but but they've done it. My uh, question agree. is this: Do you go get a team out west like that because it gives you a it gives you a platform out there? Is it nice to play a few games in that West Coast timeline? You know, maybe you get a couple of you know ESPN night games where you're the only game going at nine p.m. Uh, possibly, possibly. And we know that Boise was big enough to to get a deal with some of the big games on CBS over the past couple of years, so. You know, the brand does matter. Uh, it, the other names that I've got written down here, SMU, uh, but do you want to continue? I mean, if you want to keep going with that Southwest footprint, the way that you, uh, the Southwest Conference, uh, if you want to yeah, try and get all that together. Yeah, you Texas. Yeah. You know, that would be fine. Like, y'all, the SEC has the two big boy schools, and we'll take all the rest. Yeah. I mean, that, and that could work. Uh, Colorado State, Air Force, and South Florida, I've got written down. I, I think it really comes down to Boise, Memphis, and SMU. Like, I, that's, that's what I truly believe that they'll end up doing if they do take two more to move up to 14. Uh, you go to 16, and, I mean, my God, like, you, you could be looking at any number of schools. Like, you could be stealing from the Sun Belt. So, yeah. <laughs> You uh you got a feel on uh on anybody else like it would would SMU well, make I have more no sense? Feel, but I will, I will comment on I will comment on Gundy's comment. I think okay. Gundy's right, and yeah. I think Gundy he was asked a question he he gave an answer. It, there are strengths in numbers. There's a reason they're doing this bullshit weird alliance thing. 
And 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 I think they know that. And if they can get if the bigger they can be, the better they will be. Yeah, I, I tend to believe the more power yeah. and influence they will have. I tend to agree. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.